So after such a Geshmake Shabbos, there's a... The rabbi was a Geshmake guy. It didn't get much info from him. Uh, meaning he davens at the uh, modern Orthodox minion. He's a nice guy. His wife is a Balchuva Yiddishist. So I don't know what came first, the Balchuva or the Yiddishist uh, concept, the revival. Re the revival of uh, her, you know. And... Um, yeah, very gishmak, very good people. They spoke about uh, Yaakov and Esav, and she said she also felt for Esav and his sense of tshuva. Uh, when he meets Yaakov, he couldn't live. He couldn't live with uh, Yaakov, but he could. But for that moment, he could forgive him, and that's the moment of you know you feel like um, some people you, you love them for what uh, the memories that they give you, and but you can't really be with them because they're tzahakt and cup. Um, I don't know if Yaakov was Sahakt in Cup or maybe, maybe Yaakov was like a cheater, like this guy who, you know, he's like a nice, he comes like a nice rov, and then one day he, he does a big chatzi on you and you, you rips you off, and then you know that that's not a place to invest your um, long term relationships because it's not uh, healthy and stable. But uh, I don't think they had this whole revision of the whole Tyra or whatever. It's just that uh, it was a nice chesidish pshat or what, whatever. And, and, he, and even if you look at the Alter Rebbe's Maimodim, it speaks about the Ace of being from a higher source. I mean, when someone reads it, he's like, what does that mean? Like, could you marry Ace of? Like, could you, could you take a shiksa from, like, um, uh, uh, from France or Italy? And, you know, could you, is it, and then say, oh, this shiksa is from a higher source. And, yeah, you could. You have to be Megayer and Orthodox. You have to wash Nagavasa and go to Mikvah and do a couple of Gashmi sticky Chitani sticky things. So, uh, that was a nice. Oh, and uh, here's a great thing. I met a guy in Shul standing. I'm laning the Toyota. I did not practice enough for this Parsha, but I did a good job. But I did a lot of mistakes that I could, I should not be forgiven for because I could have practiced. It's, it's, it's not a, not, what is this? Uh, as Menachem Ben Shemo would say, Vos do you come in machen litzonis? You know, about, um, you know, you, you don't come make litzonis. You come to lane, you do a job. You do what you promised. So, uh, so what, what, um, so that part, oh, look at the dogs running around. Like, it's amazing. Look at that one. Oof. Ooh, he catches the ball like a tzaddik. So what's the... Oh, he's coming to me. Oh, tzaddik. Yeah, he's coming. The dog. Oh, Hashem, please, 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 Hashem. I'm scared. I think, I think. Hi. Very good. Hi. So, uh, I didn't want to teach the dog to smoke. It's no. bad influence on him. No. Who knows what these dogs could, what type of cigarettes they could buy. In uh, dog ears, they're old enough to buy cigarettes. Club cigarettes for her. These are, oh. <laughs> <laughs> bad I thought about that because when I was in there, they had a, a minion, a Shabbat yeah, thing. Yeah. They asked me to read the Torah, which is one thing I know how to do, so yeah. I do it for them, but I, I don't, I'm not a believer. Uh -huh. And I uh, had a dog there playing with me. It was a really oh, yeah. sweet dog. And I said, wow, if we were in like the Old Testament times yeah. and a dog came into the temple, they would kick it out and they would treat it like horrible. And I said, what if this was a mosque somewhere in, the, in, in one of the Gulf yeah. states and a dog nicely came into the mosque mm -hmm. to follow its mass? Get that dog, it's kalb, roch, like they would, you know. Right. So some traditions, they're really hostile towards uh, whatever they consider to be an unclean animal. Yep. It's crazy. I know, it is crazy. Yeah, and then last night we had this dinner uh, and they were had a whole debate because I posted an octopus yeah. on Facebook and then people saw it and then they were like, oh, it's disgusting. And I said, well, that's what people eat sometimes and some people who eat it don't find it disgusting because they're eating it. It was, it was great to uh, talk about, and you're right about that. It comes from these old traditions. I yeah. just saw a film uh, a few weeks ago about, uh, uh, I think, Lubavitch people who left. L Lubavitch people who left. I grew up Lubavitch, but the film was probably one of us on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not Lubavitch. It's a Satmar. Oh, okay. Because Lubavitch, they're an open cult, so so there's no leaving. See, I could go in, I could smoke on the Shabbos and go back to Lubavitch okay. in Crown Heights and still be with my friends. So Lubavitch doesn't have a, a excommunication system. 
I did. And that's, Twice. That's what it's like. Yes, it's in Sotmar. They actually, yeah, that's that's. There's a. I like the part where the boy goes to rehab and his father pays for it, and his father yeah. says it's not you, it's the addiction in you. So there's a lot of. Well, Steve, Steve Pinker said religious people are not completely deluded as we would expect. Like they, they, you know, they believe in souls and disembodied spirits, but not to a point where they actually open the garage door and they actually say there's some demons in there and I'm going to call the ex, uh, right. um, exterminator for demons and pay somebody to bring some uh, incense. So it's interesting how religious people, they're only deluded to the way that it goes through an organization. If the organization says that there's one God and no other gods exist, they go by an organization of these um, beliefs and disembodied spirits. And how so long have you been out? All psychological, I guess. Well, I, mean, I could say six, seven years. Oh, yeah. So it's not a long time. I think in Brooklyn. Your father taught at a yeshiva in Brooklyn? Yeah, and he was not... What part of... He was Jewish? He's, he's Jewish, but not, you know... Religious. Uh, not he taught religious. secular studies, probably. Uh, yeah. They wouldn't allow a non-religious guy to teach the Torah. No, 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 it wasn't the Torah. Right. It was, it was like English and that kind Yeah, of the stuff. mandatory but, stuff, yeah. And so he, uh, you know, he was um, not religious, but he said he always... Uh, loved having those discussions with the kids because uh, he was allowed to. He was allowed. That's to. a very yeah. open school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, some schools they wouldn't allow. Uh, it was. It was not. Um, yeah, it was modern Orthodox, yeah. probably. Yeah. Or, or that at the time Hasidim were 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 more like open because coming out. It wasn't out, like in that film. In, right. Uh, it wasn't like in the film. Us. Yeah. Because um, I know they, um, you know. They, they would uh, they would give him shit for driving on Saturday. If yeah. Saw him, but um, but it wasn't like that. That was a world I didn't really. I mean, I knew it was there. I lived in New York for a long time, but I didn't really. You know, it was very closed off. Obviously, I mean. So that film was very interesting because I didn't know about that world at all. How did you find the film? Um, I just I, I write about films about production, so I just saw that it was playing and it sounded interesting and, and for you it probably was very interesting because your was, father taught there so it probably it was yeah i mean again the people weren't like because he was i'm sure in that world now uh, a teacher wouldn't have been allowed at a yeshiva to, to talk of, to kids because he yeah, yeah i mean he would he would sort of take the the kind of rationalist point of view that you're you know probably the stephen pinker type point of view and uh they would argue with him but um but he, you know, he always said he enjoyed, you know, he got some of the best arguments from those kids, you know. Because it, it was kind of, uh, it yeah. more like they were allowed to maybe think more than they are now. Like yeah, it was less, yeah. It was less like, um, you know, you must believe because it says this, that they right. would, you know. But uh, I could obviously tell you were from New York. Uh, but the accent, yeah, I yeah, still yeah. hold, that's when I, 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 I can hold on to it and I can still be proud of it. When I think of people like Richard Feynman, where they said, sure. said his accent was like a thug on the street. Sure. You know, you have this, you have the condenser. He was explaining how the, 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 the electricity is not fire, so they could use it on Shabbat. And the rabbis right. at the seminary, he got so upset with them because he said, they're not interested in learning science, they're just trying to interpret the Talmud. And then he would be like, uh, and he had this accent, and I can still be, you know, I don't have to, there's a lot of my beliefs I have to throw away, and it's kind right. of painful to have right. to throw away something that you had, you know, cherished. Right. But the accent, I don't have to throw it away. It's the only thing I get to hold on to and right. still enjoy it, right. and it's not, a, it's not like the accent connotes any, you know, anything no, terrible. I, or, yeah. All I figured was that you were from New York. The yeah, rest yeah. I didn't know. And I'm dressed uh, in the Shabbat garb because I'm, you know, but I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I wouldn't, if you saw me seven years ago, I wouldn't have a phone, I wouldn't be smoking, and uh, and I would probably be afraid of dogs. Well, I'm, I'm glad, <laughs> especially about that, because as you now know, dogs are very sweet. Yes, or they are, they are. All, I was making a little joke on the camera of uh, this, uh, part of the Torah where you say it and it's supposed to have a magical effect on a dog when the Jews left Egypt yeah. and the dogs didn't bark so if you say it and you're afraid of a dog it's supposed to take the fear out of the believer mm -hmm. but a lot of believers say it and if they're still saying it and they're still afraid of the dog so 
No. The belief is not working for them. Well, do you think? <laughs> There's no placebo. <laughs> do you think that uh, maybe the fact that the Egyptians were big into dogs, that maybe that's part of the... Uh, it's interesting because they were very into cats, and the Torah oh, doesn't sorry. mention any story, anything about cats. Right. So it seems like the writers of the Bible really never went to Egypt to write a good story. If they no. would have been there, they would have wrote about the pyramids. They would have wrote right, that's right, right. not in there. So no, no. That's, yeah, uh, and that sea hasn't done that thing since. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, once upon a time, God made miracles. Now He's testing us. Uh -huh. <laughs> he changed. The deity changed his uh, his way of being. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very yeah. interesting. I, w I wonder if he ever had that conversation with the kids at the yeshiva. That would be great. I'm sure that he did. Yeah. yeah you know, uh, interesting. Yeah, I guess the, the principals of the school were not uh, didn't have that moral panic, so he was able to do it, and, and then nothing happened, you know. Yeah. He's protecting the ball, huh? Ooh, look at him go. Oof. Oof, this guy's running on the street. I have to say that the most surprising